morning troops, another day, another drain. Oh. Hey, one of those mornings, the alarm went off and I opened one eye and I was like, oh, should I get up? <laughs> or should I go for an afternoon session? <laughs> but I didn't, I got up. Oh, I can hear a beep. I'll just set up. Had a little drive around. It took me ages to pick a swim out. In the end, I plumped for this swim, even though it's very shallow. I mean, I'm only fishing in two foot of water. But I've already seen a, a lot of activity. So while I was setting up my left-hand rod, a jack did pick up the bait and move with it, but I didn't hook into it. So I'm all set up now, ready to go. I'll show you the swim now. It's quite a mild day. It looks like it's going to be a bit bright, but there's a bit of colour in the water. Even though we have had no rain, really. A bit of colour in the water. It's not really piking weather yet. <laughs> Still quite mild. No frosts yet to speak of. But as I say, I'm quite hopeful. Water level's low, but that doesn't deter me. The only thing is I'm probably only fish with two rods today, in this swim anyway because it is quite narrow, it is quite shallow, so I'm going to need the centre of the swim to play any fish and land them, so I can't really have a middle rod. So, let's get cracking. Let's hope. <laughs> it's not as dull as the last video, <laughs> where we didn't catch anything. Let's crack on. Well, here's the drain. Sun's rising. Very narrow, very, very shallow today. Look at that water level, drop right down. On the right hand rod, half a herring. And on the left hand rod, half a joey mackerel. As I say, the water level is really low. Normally I would expect it roughly where the end of the reeds are there. You can see my boot marks where I was out setting up. That's normally this time of year, still underwater. But I mean, it, at the moment it looks like it's at its January level, which is strange. I mean, they're running off quite hard. There we go, look out there. See the fry moving? Ooh. Oh, there they go. See the fry? Definitely pike around. Come on, you pike. We really have got the autumn colours now on the drain. Look at the, the trees on the far bank. The reed bed over there.
Isn't it lovely when you get off to a good start to the day? Not the biggest fish in the world. Not going to set any records. There you go, look. Unhook now. Yeah, all right, girl. Yeah, I think I'll be changing that trace. Well, first one of the day. Not the biggest fish in the world, but they all count. Let's have a look at her. Nice jack. Perfect little fish munching machine, aren't they? Beautiful. Let's get her back. Go down to the water's edge. Really muddy here. And what we do here. Go on then. There you go. Right, to me, that trace, look, it's all tangled up. Bits of the wire are bare. Hello. You could straighten it out and put it, hook it back into a dead bait. It'd probably work perfectly fine, but I never take the chance. And it don't take a long time to change a tray. So here we're going to quickly change the tray. So I'll show you my knot of choice. Keep all my spare traces in one of these. I've got about four of them, but you know what I mean. <laughs> And what we'll do is we'll get one trace out of the bin, take off the old one and tie a new one. It's going to take a long quick snip. Now there are lots of fishing knots out there. And normally, you know, you've got to go which works best for you, really. But me, I always use the same type of knot. A grinner. So I take it round once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven loops of the line. Right by the eye of the swivel, there's a, a loop. You put it through the eye of the loop. Wet the line and pull tight. That knot is as strong as they come. Never lets me down. Tidy it up. Spare line goes in the bin. And there you have your trace already. This is a used trace. Not all the traces I've put away are damaged or anything. So it's been used before. What I like to do just before I cast that bait up with a used trace, just give the barbs a bit, the hook points a bit of a sharpen with one of these sharpeners. Doesn't have to be, you have a, you have, unless you have a fine one and a coarse one, I, I sharpen it with a coarse one first. Then finish it off with the fine sharpener. That's lovely and sharp, just pricks my finger. Again, the two barbs that are two, two barbless points on the hook that would be out. Of course, it doesn't have to be, I have to spend hours doing it, just a couple of. A 
couple of little strokes, take off any burrs, any bluntness. And that is as sharp as they come now, and it's ready to go. So let's start fishing with this rod again. And what I like to do after I've ch changed the trace, I mean, fishing can be expensive or as cheap as you want it to be, but why? Why go out your way to waste money? Now look, there's nothing wrong with a swivel. As I say, nothing wrong with a swivel, so you should all have a pair of these in your kit. Snip it off. One perfectly good swivel you can use again. Just snip the wire. Because there's absolutely nothing wrong with that hook sleeve. Or rig sleeve, whatever you want to call it. So we have one perfectly good swivel to save one perfectly good rig sleeve to save anything else on there worth saving there's actually nothing wrong with the hooks so again snip the wire This rig, this rig sleeve is nothing wrong with that. Keep that. Yeah, so we've kept the rig sleeves. There's nothing wrong with the hooks. And as they've been put on with a knotless knot, it oh, don't matter how they've been put on. Really, I'm going to keep them. You, you know, you don't. Just because one element of the the trace is no good anymore doesn't mean you can't keep everything else. You know, I mean, cut down on the costs on your general fishing. You can treat yourself to that new rod you've been meaning to get, or. Once again, with the hook snips, wire cutters, whatever you want to call them. And there we have it. Trace is all broken down. I've got two very good hooks, nothing wrong with them. Still sharp, still cut my finger. Swivel, nothing wrong with. And the rig sleeves, nothing wrong with. And all you could do then is put that crap in the bin. Well, an hour into the session, had one, lost one, so it's, you know, it's been a good start so far. Saw plenty of fish scrambling away for their lives, fry darting everywhere this morning, so definitely pike about. Had one on the half mackerel, lost a fish on the half mackerel as well, and they were different fish, so because the, the one I lost was only a I mean a really small jack, it was holding on to the dead bait for dear life. As soon as it saw me in the net it just let go. Second one which I landed was a jack but it was a lot bigger than the one that got away. Thank <laughs> thank the Lord. So we're not on a blank, not on the treaded blank like last time, so everything else is gonna be a bonus hopefully. So I mean last year this stretch I had quite a lot of fish out averaging the 14 to 16 pound mark. So I'm hoping there's a few of them still around. You, you, you never can tell. And if they have, maybe a couple of them have put on a few pounds. But, you know, if, you know, if you're catching four or five doubles in a day, I think you should be happy with that. I mean, we, us old gips, well, I'm not that old, but you know what I mean. We like to wax lyrical about the good old days on the drains and everything when you could catch 15, 20 fish 
in a day session and half of them would be doubles, a couple of them would be, tw you know, that's the past. You've got to make do with what you got. If you want to go fishing, for whatever reason you want to go fishing for, whether it's for pike in the winter, whether it's for roach fishing in the winter, whatever you're doing, you just got to adjust to your surroundings, you know. If you're fishing a, say you're fishing a, a river or a canal near you, and the average stamp of the fish is only 10 to 12 pounds. And you know, if you go out that day and you catch a nine pounder or a 10 pounder, you've got to be happy. You know, you've had one of the top tier fish in that fishery. You know, we can't all fish True Valley or, <laughs> or hark back to the old days. You know, you've got to make do with what you got. And you know, you either go fishing or you don't. It's not easy, you know. You, you I mean, you, you get up early. For, I mean, it's pretty mild still, so you get up early. You sit there in the freezing cold some days, frost everywhere, hands bitter cold, you know. And you try everything, and you're just not catching. Well, you can go back to the same spot the next day and fill your boots. So. What I tend to do is, yeah, you get a bit down and a bit depressed when you haven't caught. But you just got to persevere, push on. The anglers out there that get the good results, the big results, they're determined, you know, they're, they're putting the hours, they're putting the time, learn from their mistakes, learn from others, learn new tricks, new edges. And you know, you just keep going all you can do no one's an expert at everything all the time you know I mean I've been pike fishing for 40 years but still learn you know different venues different different weather conditions a whole host of reasons why you're not catching or why you are catching one of the basic ones is is the fish there in front of you you know and a lot of guys nowadays it's one small bag, a net, lure rod, cover a host of water all day. I, you know, in a way, I admire them. You know, they're, they're out there, they're doing it. It's action packed. But it's just, you know, that's not my cup of tea. And it's the same way. Someone will be driving past me today, and they'll look over and go, oh, "Piker." It won't be for them. They'll be looking for a little spot where they can catch some roach on a bread punch and. You know, it's horses for courses. We'll go for different reasons, but I'm happy at the moment. I mean, I've had one, lost one, only been fishing an hour. Now let's see if we can catch some more. That's my little. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you would call it. It's not a rant, really. It's a musings of a delusional piker. <laughs> I suppose what I was prattling on about earlier before I had this 
is don't get too disheartened. You can only fish for what's there. You can only fish I mean life is not all about for a lot of the videos you see. Fish are cast 20, 20 pounders, 30 pounders. They're not everywhere. They're not for you know, unless you're willing to travel, put in all the miles. You have to fish. And what's wrong with that? You have to fish for what you go. Beautiful fish that long. Down at the water's edge. But nice long fish. She'll she's a little beauty, she'll be a big fish one day. Look how lively she is. Oh. We're going the wrong way, petal. Go on. Go on, off you go. Here we are, three hours into the session now. Two fish landed, one lost. All on half mackerel, all on the left hand rod. Right hand rod produced nothing, even though I placed the bait earlier, right on top of all the fry jumping out of the water. There's obviously a pike there, but nothing. Still persevered with herring. I'm going to swap it over next time I have a change around. I'm going to stick me a go to sardine on there. It is really quite mild, quite bright, very sunny. I mean, I'm, my swim's in the shade, but the sunlight's on the water, so you know, it is quite sunny. When you stand up, you can feel it. I was, you know, it is quite mild. I was talking to someone earlier on and trying to look up the bank, I just couldn't, you know, it blinded you to the sun sunshine so it's a lovely day so we've had we've had two nothing earth shattering nothing to get too excited about but fish are fish quite happy catching and this you know conditions are I wouldn't say perfect you know I prefer it overcast I don't like it too bright but I'm fishing in about two foot of water that's all there's, there's not a lot of depth there now i mean in the summer when i tench fish along here you know you're fishing anywhere between four to six foot depending on the layout at the bottom of the drain but the average depth is about five foot along here in the summer and now we're fishing in two foot of water it's surprising you know the pike it don't affect them, don't bother them much. You know, they'll, they'll happily, happily patrol this length of the drain, this section. And it's, you know, in some places, I mean, you can see the bottom 
two to three foot out from the bank you can see the bottom still and then it slopes off so you haven't got even the whole drain to fish at you know what width it is now you could take six foot off of that because three foot either side the margins are unfishable that's too shallow you know you're talking about two three inches of water and it slopes off so you more or less got to fish the middle channel and as I say that's at the moment it's about two foot two and a half foot in places that's it Let's see what the afternoon brings I'm quite confident for a change don't sound too pessimistic <laughs> A day or two halves. There's me waxing lyrical this morning about all the activity, fry scattering all over the place, pike moving around. Two runs, well, three runs, two fish, one lost this afternoon. <laughs> Not a touch. Just seen, oh, just as I'm talking at the camera, I've just seen a pike. slightly downstream from me it's just thrashed out the water or something so <laughs> I was a bit lazy I think earlier on you know I mean I said from sort of 11 to 12 oh, I'm not seagulls looking for me dead bait and all come on get out of it you got to be they got to be on your toes all the time I was a bit lazy earlier on, should have made a move, but I didn't, because I was quite confident in the swim, and, well, since half twelve, oh, look at this seagull, he definitely wants my dead baits, since about twelve, I've worked 100 metres, 200 metres, my baits left and right, up and down stream, you know, I've moved them around quite a lot, you know, so I'm covering a lot of water. It's not like I'm just sitting here waiting for something to happen. You know, I've, I have been working the bank, but my normal tactic is, you know, on a wider drain it would be near shelf, far shelf, centre track. You know, you can only really go centre track, you can go slightly near shelf, far shelf, but there's not a lot of water there. But what I have been doing obviously is casting 20 metres, next cast 30, 40 metres downstream or upstream. So I'm covering a lot of water and uh, nothing's happened yet. So, but I mean, as always, gotta be confident, you gotta hope carry on doing what you're doing and if you think what you're doing is right hopefully oh here we go